Robots are finally here. Well, they have been for quite a while actually. Robot vacuums have become quite common, with Roomba releasing their first model over 20 years ago. I've been using one of the lower end models now for over two and a half years and I've just recently upgraded to one of the more expensive models and so I want to share my experience whether they're worth it and which model I would go for. So back in September of 2020, I moved in with my girlfriend and since we both don't really like cleaning but still want to have a clean apartment and we also are both into tech, we decided to get a robot vacuum. As an overall upfront conclusion, I have to say that it has been definitely worth it to have this because we haven't really had to vacuum more than like once a month and it's been great so far. We usually use it a couple of times a week depending on how dirty our apartment gets and it's so convenient to, for example, have guests over and before just let it do a run and have a clean apartment. We also have it hidden under the couch so it doesn't really get in the way. It's not there for like everyone to see and ask questions about and it's just great to have it come out to do its job and then just go back there and basically never be seen again. For this cheaper model we have, it doesn't have the best navigation feature. It's like more of a random navigation, it just bumps into stuff and figures out where to clean and where not to. So it's not the best, but honestly it works fine. If you want it to clean just one room, you just like close the door and place it in the room you want it to clean. And then when it's finished, it will always just go back to its home base. The app also works very well and reliably and it does everything it's supposed to do. With the cheaper model, you don't really get all of the mapping features. You don't get a map of your apartment. You can't really assign specific rooms, so you can't tell it to just clean the living room or clean the bedroom. But for like triggering it remotely to just clean everything, it always worked well. Regarding battery life, for our about 55, I think, square meter apartment, it has been great. But for bigger spaces, maybe you might look into more of the expensive models because they have this feature where they will remember where the battery ran out, they will return to their charging home base, and then they will just, when they are charged back up, return to where they left off and finish the job. Overall, I would say it has done about 90 to 95% of all vacuuming. We have never really vacuumed the whole space, only like the corners where it sometimes has a hard time to get to all of the dirt. But in general, it has been so great. We have a runtime of over 200 hours so far on this. And yeah, it's just so much time that you can save. And honestly, yeah, like if you don't want to have all of the vacuuming all the time, you would normally have to do it probably every week as well. Spend like an hour on it it's really convenient to not have to do that. Some minor annoyances we have experienced. First, um, the cheaper model doesn't always hit the home base perfectly, so sometimes you have to kind of help to really make contact with the charging things, and that's kind of inconvenient, especially if you have it hidden under some couch or bed or something. Second, the navigation can be really dumb sometimes, so if it gets stuck, it will just not continue at all. It's not really good at like figuring out a way to continue the job and just avoid the obstacle. The newer model we have now is really great at that, but this one, like the Roomba 676, I think, that we had before, it's okay, but like if it gets stuck, it will be stuck and it will need your help. And thirdly, this will apply to all models. You will, of course, have to clean them from time to time. You can get these with like a clean base where they will just like have a bigger bag for all of the dirt and then will just empty the smaller dirt bin on the room by itself every time after they finish a job. But you will still have to like clean the brushes sometimes or replace them. And I would say it's not a lot of like work in day to day, but you just have to think about it. It's not a totally hands-off experience, but still it's so much less work than actually cleaning your apartment. Okay, so with the pros and cons out of the way, let's dive deeper into which model I would actually recommend. And in general, I would say it depends on your needs. So if you have a bigger space, I would go for more of the expensive models. If you have a smaller space, one of the cheaper models will probably suffice. So first up, as I said, we had the Roomba 676. That is one of the cheapest models. I think it's actually discontinued now without any of the bells and whistles of the newer models. But again, as I said, even with the random navigation, it does really great. And we paid like 150 euros, I think, open box. And so if we sell it now for like 50 euros, I think um, we will probably get for it. It's still like a great value for money for those two and a half years of cleaning. Of course, with Roombas, it's the same as with everything, especially in tech. 
there will be diminishing returns. So if you get one of the cheaper models, you will obviously get like 90% of the value and you will pay like double the price for 10% more features. But that's just something you have to, I think, know going into it. Honestly, I think even if you don't have the biggest house, but you still like some of the features, it might be worth it to go for some of the more expensive models. I will only be talking about Roombas here. I have heard that the Roborock models or the D-Bot Ecovacs, I think is the company, are also pretty great, but I only have experience with the Roomba models, so you will have to watch like vacuum reviews. It's a great channel on like robot vacuums and he does like really in-depth comparisons. So if you want like specific models, go there. I just want to talk about more of the broad, like should you get a cheap model versus getting a more expensive model. And considering that this is going to be a purchase that will probably last you for a long time, we wouldn't have had to replace our model. We just wanted some of the newer features. I think it can be worth it to go for one of the more upgraded models because like it will save you time and be more convenient every day. So what do you actually get if you decide to go for one of the upgraded models? Well, for example, on the Roomba J7 we have now, it has like a camera that is pointed to the front and so it has AI object detection, which is great for like cables that might be laying around or like shoelaces, it won't try to clean there and get tangled up. And so the most important benefit that it has added for us is like that whenever you're away, you can always make it clean the apartment and you don't have to worry about it being stuck somewhere because you had like a charging cable lying around or something. So that is something to consider. Also the mapping feature, while not necessary, is still great. Clean the living room. Of course, in the bedroom, we don't have to clean as often as in the living room where we eat and stuff like that. And so it's just great to not have to worry about, oh, let's close the door first, because if we don't, it might get stuck somewhere in there or I don't know. So it's just good to have those rooms and have it kind of be more specific with where it is able to clean. I would say also that some of the more advanced models from other companies can be great with the mopping feature, but as I said, I haven't really had a chance to try those out. And also those are in like a totally different price range They can be like very expensive, but then you get a totally hands-off experience with mopping and vacuuming. So that might still be worth it. In general, as a easy rule to apply, I would say if you have a one room apartment, I would still get a robot vacuum, even though some people might think that is stupid, but I think it's like in terms of value for money, it's a pretty easy decision to make. So I would still get one, but then I would go for one of the cheaper models because you just won't really benefit from most of the features that the more expensive models have. If you have at least two rooms or more, I would really consider the Roomba J7 or equal models from competitors that have AI object detection because that is just something that's really great. Multiple rooms, maybe you will not always have to clean everything or look for stuff that might be laying around under the bed or I don't know. Um, yeah, no, I don't, it's not like I'm a super messy person, but like sometimes you might just have stuff lying around and so it's just great not to have to worry about that. Also, at least here in Germany, iRobot has a great refurbished store, so you can look in there. We got one from there and it looks like it has never been used and it was a great price compared to the new prices for the J7. And yeah, so definitely look into that as well. Okay, so let's try to draw a conclusion here. Overall, are robot vacuums worth it or not? And I would say yes, definitely they are worth it. It feels so great to just come home to a clean apartment and honestly it still feels kind of science fiction-y to have this little magic robot device that just goes through your whole apartment, cleans it for you and you just don't have to do anything. I know that many people will hire a cleaner or something but honestly like I'm a student and it would be kind of obscene to hire a cleaner and maybe you can't afford it even later in life and so it's great to have this kind of middle step where it does most of the work without you having to kind of hire someone else or pay someone else to do it it's just a robot that does everything for you. And with it doing about 90 to 95% of all vacuuming you would have to do, I think it's also a pretty easy purchase to justify. You can just kind of calculate the time you will save and kind of 
think about what your hourly rate would be and then you can pretty easily decide on how much you could spend on it. With the over 200 hours it has cleaned so far, even if I could do it like maybe twice as fast, we have definitely still made all of our money back and more it has paid for itself multiple times over. Okay, so even though overall I would definitely advise you to just go out and buy one right now, I just want to give you some pointers as to what might be a limiting factor. So first up, if you have higher thresholds like between rooms or stuff like that, just be mindful and maybe look at some reviews where they have tested that in more detail because maybe it will be too high and then that could be really annoying. Also, if some of your furniture is like too low, just kind of think about that beforehand so you are not like really sad after because it doesn't clean under it. Also with like carpets, I think it should do a pretty good job, but in general, I would just kind of be careful with that and not really rely on the Roomba. I don't know, <laughs> I haven't done any testing myself and I think it really depends on the kind of carpet you have, but that's just something to consider. And also I would just think about where to place it. So you just have a really nice place where it can be out of the way. If you don't really find a good place, yeah, just maybe reconsider if you have the space for it in your current living setup. Yeah, so just think about those factors. But in general, as I said, I would definitely recommend you to try one out. I think that this has been one of the best purchases I have ever made because it has paid for itself multiple times over. And yeah, as I said, it's, it's just so nice to have this automated cleaning experience and I can really recommend it to you. And just a quick recap, as I said, you can really get most of the value with the cheaper models, but if you like some of the features and you plan on using it for a long time, maybe just consider one of the more expensive models because you pay for the extra convenience, but it will be very convenient in your day-to-day -day life. All right, so this has been my experience with robot vacuums in general and specifically the Roomba 676 and the Roomba J7. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.